Welcome back. So second half of the week started out with me uh, back up at Brits again working on the lathe and this time it's these bushings um, that hold the wings on and what I had to do was actually shorten them a little bit and also narrow out the flanges a little bit. So you can see that one there has a thicker flange and I had to take them down from 3 16 to 1 16 and then everyone has to have you know a slightly different length and here you can see Brit is actually using his knurler to knurl uh, the longer bushings there so um, when they get bonded into place on the wings on the spars there they get to uh, you know have a nice rough surface there for the high sole to grip against uh, so they won't sort of rotate or slide or move out or anything like that and we weren't able to do that on the shorter ones so Jeff ended up uh, roughing up those ones by hand yeah while that was going on Devin was uh, masking off and then painting with uh, some matte um, black paint there these pockets where the door hook locks um, sort of go into just really kind of to make them disappear because you know there's they're not really supposed to be a feature uh, so anyway you can see he's got those um, masked off and painted and uh, at the same time um, Jeff and Devin got the fuselage sitting back up on foam blocks there with you know a little bit of room under the gear because we're getting ready to do a little bit more work on uh, getting the landing gear retraction working correctly and here you can see uh, Jeff's got the um, first of the elevators there in place and it's moving through its motions there but unfortunately it's a little bit rough right now because those hangers that I had made were water jet cut so I need to make some adjustments to those to smooth them out um, and that'll come up soon and uh, here those, uh, here's the sleeves there, or the bushings I should say, for holding the wings on um, after I brought them back from Brits and you can see they're all basically done there and ready to be bonded into place. And we're starting to get some more little side jobs uh, done. So this is um, the landing gear switch or lever and the little uh, box there that uh, operates all the LEDs to show you, you know, what position your gear is in. So this is on the inside of the console and it's upside down right now. So um, Jeff and Devin got those little studs mounted in there and um, got those boxes and the switch uh, all screwed into place. So that's another little job done. And I managed to get the redrive mounted up here on the engine mount. And it took a little while to figure out the technique for getting it all in place there and uh, getting it bolted up. And these bolts there, I've got some longer ones. I've got to replace out these ones with, as, as you can see there, some of those nuts, the bolts are barely sort of poking out and that's because you have to have some spacers in there because the tabs that they bolt up to on the engine mount there aren't perfectly aligned so there are a couple of spacers on each of the different ones um, to you know offset everything correctly to handle that and as you can see you've got the oil return there and the oil feeds are in place and it'll come off again but possibly we may run it before it comes off um, I did order the oil impregnated um, bronze oil rings there for inside the drive um, from Barry and they'll they'll take about three weeks before we get those and uh, that should fix our problem that because if they do touch the shaft they'll just wear down the way they should and here you can see there's those uh, um, straight fences there and they've um, been primed up now so and, and Jeff's drilled the holes and stuff in them for um, not only allowing the mounting bolts for the wing to go through there but also um, some mounting bolts for them themselves and here's that gear lever there in place that still needs to be glued down there. I think that's how you lock it into place so it doesn't rotate. You see it's kind of loose. But that's basically the mechanism. It doesn't move by itself. You actually have to pull it out before it will allow you to move it from up to down. And I know everybody complained about the position, but that's where it's going to be on the prototype. And we'll see how it works out. And meanwhile, um, I'm actually working on um, some of this stuff for the telemetry. So um, just making sure these are things are all working that's the accelerometer there you can see the top one moving up and down and I also have um, three of these strain gauges there so this is a, um, a three position or three three different orientation strain gauge and you can see on there when I flex it around the um, second third and fourth ones on the chart there or on the display there are the ones that are showing up so we're just testing to make sure that that's all working um, before we bond these in place. And there you can see those uh, wing bushings that um, I did at Brits there. 
cleaned up a bit. Brits, um, Jeff's gone and bonded those into place on the wing spar. There's one there. So the next step uh, now will be to um, bolt up the wings to the main spar and then bond in the bushings uh, on the main spar. So we'll just sort of bond them in, in place. That way we know we've got everything aligning nicely um, instead of taking a chance. And then we'll come back finally and, um, and put the wings back in the jigs here and close them out. And there's those uh, straight fences now. They've had another coat of paint on them, so they're basically ready to go for a final paint, but that won't be until we paint the aircraft. And here's the results of Devon's mad skills. So he's got uh, not only those um, pockets painted up, but he also put the pins back in and also the strike plates back in and bolted those into place. So uh, those look really nice now, the way they should have been. And uh, we can move on to the next thing. And now that the redrive is in place, we can uh, work on getting the cowling all sorted out. So here you can see Jeff has got the lower section there, or the first part of the lower section of the cowling. He's got that fitted nicely and uh, clicked into place, and that'll actually get bonded in. And then the baggage door openings will get cut out. Uh, that's there where you can see where there's no sort of only a bit of primer around the outside edge. That's the baggage doors. Uh, so he's got that fitted nicely. And the uh, next step now is to fit the next or the, the section or the aft section behind it, and then ultimately uh, the two top sections of the cowling as well. Now, the fact that it's made. And now we're on to Friday morning, and this is pretty much just for you guys. We are pulling the prop out of the box, and we're going to mount it up on the. Uh, on the redrive to see how it all looks. Um, it's mainly, you know, a bit for a test fit, but mainly for you guys, so you can have a look at how it uh, all looks when it's all mounted up. And so uh, Jeff and Devin are just removing it from the mounting um, board that it we comes on. We'll and uh, you know, the other thing that we're you know doing this for is so we can sort of fit the cowling. But uh, Jeff had a better idea of just making this round plate that you'll see here shortly, so he can fit the cowling around that and it'll just match up um, to what the spinner is. But anyway, there's uh, everything sort of taught, uh, s sorted up, cleaned out, and uh, here's the prop coming into place carefully. <laughs> I don't want to bang it around. Uh, but yeah, I think it looks great. Um, five blade was definitely the way to go. For a while there, um, I think I had a few of you guys going thinking that we were only going to get the four blade, but I managed to get the five blade and uh, didn't cost uh, too much more money and as I said the last time I showed it it's going to perform better because it will run at a lower RPM and it'll actually because of that it'll uh, be quieter as well and it should climb better and also cruise better um, and so uh, it's, I think it's going to be a really good um, selection for the aircraft instead of running a four blade and I have a feeling it'll actually be smoother as well because you don't have two blades um, sort of parallel each other or opposite each other that come and uh, align up with the wing as they're rotating around. There's always um, a different number of blades there in each different position. So you're not going to get any sort of harmonic effect um, that you might get with a four bladed prop um, with the wind or with the air coming off the back of the uh, trailing edge of the wing. And even though you see that the aircraft is sitting up on the foam blocks there, it's about 5 inches higher than it's going to be. There's still loads of clearance. There's 17 inches of clearance underneath that prop right now. So once it's back down on the ground, it's be a good 12 inches still, uh, which is what I sort of uh, wanted it to be. So there's a very little chance of any sort of prop strike. Uh, but anyway, what do you guys think of that? Does that look the business or what? Um, I, think it, uh, I think it looks great. And just having the black prop with no stripes on it or anything like that and it has uh, just those I guess nickel or whatever uh, whatever it is they put the leading edges then on there um, as you can see little shiny bits that Devon's touching there <laughs> um, so that looks really nice and uh, Jeff's going to put the spinner on there so you can see how that looks and then ultimately uh, we'll be fitting the cowling up around the engine compartment so we are starting to close in on getting all the, the final things sorted out here, which is exciting. Uh, but there's still lots more uh, to do. Um, but at least it's not sort of tedious sanding work at this point. It's 
putting things together and you know finishing off things that have been in the works for months on end you know things that we've had to build and make and figure out and now they're all sort of slowly coming together one at a time and I'm just double checking some measurements there just to see uh, how much that spinner uh, sits over the flange because uh, that kind of um, tells me exactly where the cowling is going to end because uh, we actually have the cowling overlapping the spinner and there's about a one inch gap all the way around to allow air to escape uh, from the engine compartment and uh, you'll see that in an upcoming video and feel free to leave a comment and uh, let me know what you guys think about how that prop looks on there and uh, maybe give the video a like if you if you're happy with it or give it a dislike if you don't like it if you're one of those people who wants the four blade then let me know I'll be interested to hear uh, but yeah leave a comment Alright, enough clowning around, time to get back to work. Uh, so the next job was the landing gear. And I had bought this uh, little motor controller that has um, a little pot on it, a variable controller. Uh, so I can adjust the voltage that's running up to uh, the gear uh, pump. And I spent some time during the morning uh, getting that all wired into place. And now it's time to test it. And it's been a while since we've actually done anything on the gear with respect to cycling it and you know we've had some leaks and stuff like that and and it's actually low i'm pretty sure it's low on uh, fluid at this point uh, but anyway i got the um, controller hooked up and just started with it slow um, just to see how it was going to retract because before it was going too fast and as you can see there the nose is going up and i've just got on the slowest setting right now just so it's moving and uh, because of that the you know the nose gear is the lightest so that d always goes up first and then once that goes up and um, the pump starts to build a little bit more pressure one of the gear legs goes up and then it kind of gets a little bit heavy so then the other one goes up and then that gets a little bit heavy and so then the two kind of do this little duck dance where one goes up a little bit and then comes down and then ultimately they find their way up but um, i'm trying to figure out a way uh, or if there is a way to kind of equalize this so it doesn't do that and uh, you kind of want them to come up at the same time so you don't get this sort of adverse yaw effect while you're climbing out and the gear is retracting um, and so uh, you know we also got these um, pressure switches involved or in, um, in line there now and uh, i need to adjust those as well so there you can see now the main gear is coming up and again i got it on pretty slow and that's actually not a bad speed to have it at um, you know if it comes up too fast it's pretty aggressive and it sort of bangs into place and we're still going to look and see if there's some way of putting some uh, stoppers in there just to sort of cushion it uh, you know, when, it when it gets to the um, to the all the way up and also the all the way down position um, anyway so just doing some work on that and trying to get it all sorted out
So after retracting it, I was looking for leaks and just uh, trying to dial in the um, the cutoff valve there and the solenoid um, pre well, pressure switch is what it is basically. When it comes up to um, the pressure that holds it all in place, the little cutoff switch um, actually you know removes the power so it doesn't keep constantly running the pump. And here you can see now I'm dropping it down. Um, and the main gear comes down first, or at least one leg did, and then the other one came down last. Uh, so there's still a bit of more work to do, and it turns out that I actually was really low on fluid in there, so I topped that up as well, and cycled it a bunch more times, and, and uh, just you know trying to make sure that there's no air in the system. And I think I still have some work to, well, I know I still have some work to do to smooth out. I know I can make it better, uh, but it's going to take a little bit of... Uh, messing around with it but ultimately it is working now and that power controller um, definitely made it better I have a lot more control of the speed now so that's a that's a good thing but anyway more work to do still on the landing gear and there's a little flashback there for when I was actually topping up um, the ver the reservoir there with ATF so uh, and that actually did make quite a difference here and I do need to keep cycling it some more to make sure that there's no air in the whole system and I told you before about this uh, wheel thing that Jeff made there. So basically just got that bolt to the prop flange with a bit of an offset. And that represents where the uh, outside of the cowling needs to live. So now he can work up to that with getting the cowling fitted. And uh, Devin and I also got the second one of these um, pressure outflow valves installed into place there. And uh, just um, put it in there with some RTV and then uh, six uh, AN3 bolts to hold it in so uh, next week we can actually start um, hooking up the connections for that so uh, that's another thing that we can check off the list and just to show you in here in the front um, there's that little uh, controller that I was telling you about just temporarily taped up that outside housing of it that I need to sort that out but anyway um, that's working well so we'll do a bit more uh, work on the gear next week to try and smooth it all out and uh, next week will be more fitting the cowling and just getting more of the systems into place. So that's our update for this week. Uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, give us a like and uh, uh, share it and give us a comment and subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks again for watching.